Hey, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter one. I remember uh, a few years ago when I lived in Missouri, I would, for, for me, therapy is getting outside. And pastors need help, you know? <laughs> come on, come, come on, give us a courtesy laugh or something. We need some help. And so I, I, I took my old town canoe, put it on top of my Jeep, and I was supposed to meet Mountain Mike in the Irish wilderness down by the 11 Point River. I was late because of all the duties of the church. I put everything, threw it in the truck, got down there, and it was literally dark at the top of the river when I started to unload my gear. Mike was nowhere to be found. I got my canoe in the water down on the 11 point and just started floating in the dark. Can you say insane? insane. Yeah, and so solo floating down through the river and I had a little flashlight that I had from one of my kids from a Christmas program, that's all I had. I put it in my teeth and I'm canoeing down the river and I can hear the next you know, turn, I can hear the ripple effect, I can hear the sweepers. How many have ever gone through some sweepers in your canoe and lose your glasses, right, Pastor Jesse? <laughs> and so we are down, I'm going down there and I can't find Mike. And I thought, I might as well just pull over the side of the river and camp for the night. About 11 o'clock, I'm enjoying this amazing uh, show that God created called The Milky Way. And I thought, this is beautiful, and it's time to go to bed. I, I, I let my campfire dim down a little bit and kind of backed into my tent, and I see these two kind of fiery blue yellow coals in the wilderness, in the darkness, looking at me. And I look to the right and I see two more over here. And there's two, two coals of fire looking at me. And I look over here and I'm, 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 a, I'm circled. They're circling me. I'm thinking, man. How many know that nature has a, in the wilderness has an ability to level the playing field with us as our little safe human habitats that we, we're in a sanctuary, right? Come on. And we got drywall, we got carpet, we got lights, we got everything. But when you're in the wilderness, man, I think uh, the playing field's a little bit shifted a little bit. And I zipped up my tent because now I'm going to be safe by that little neoprene whatever. <laughs> Nobody's going to get me. You know, last, I think it was three, four weeks ago, we had a dude in Prescott. He got killed by a 377-pound black bear. That's like 20 minutes from my house. I'm like, you know, wilderness and wild things are real. And sometimes we get immune to them, don't we? And so um, I zip up my tent, pray. That was one of the nights I really learned how to pray. <laughs> Jesus, protect me. And he did. I'm here today. They didn't eat me. Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. Oh, I'm camping out on this scripture. This is about Jesus, wilderness experience. And I'm not talking about, you know, it's a dry spell for him. I'm talking, he was 40 days and 40 nights actually in the wild. In fact, Mark chapter one, verse uh, 13 says that he was with the wild animals in the wilderness, but the angels attended him. Let's pray. Father, thank you. God, thank you for every man, woman, boy, girl, person in this room that you created in your image. We are sons and daughters of the living Father God. And I thank you for it, Lord. Help us to realize whose we are today. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Turn to someone and say, this is gonna be wild. This is gonna be great. Come on, do it. Second service. You know how blessed you guys are at Journey Church? I mean, there's, there, there, there's a lot of churches that you'll go to now that I'm traveling, and, and most of them are just wonderful. And I've heard there are some churches where you go in and, and it's, everything's really nice and everybody's really nice and it's all nice. And then you're like, this doesn't feel like my skin. It's too religious. How many glad that uh, Journey is not like that? Come on. It's not church of the frigid air, man. I'm telling you. I, I, like, I like a real church with real people. See, God, God loves you so much that he saved you 
and he loves you just the way you are, but he loves you just enough not to keep you that way. <laughs> he loves you enough to kind of like push you a little bit more. He, 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 he says you, you need to go to journey and you need to kind of dig in, dive in, get in to what God has. And so here we are between the fangs and the feathers and that's where Jesus is, how God uses wilderness to shape and keep the identity that you were meant to have. See, Mark's gospel is really amazing, just between two fires. The fire that burnt Rome down, where Nero burnt Rome down, blamed the Christians, how many think that would be a nightmare? That'd be really wonky, wouldn't it, if Troy burnt down and the community of Troy blamed the Christians? Yeah, things get a little bit um, sketchy. And so we're right between that and then just a little bit later, the entire, the, the temple in Jerusalem is burnt down. So we got all kinds of stuff in the culture happening and the Christian community is there, it's, it's the birthing Christian community and Mark comes along and he announces good news but he does it in the midst of fake news and bad news and then he introduces John the Baptist and this is where we're gonna pick up. Mark chapter one, verse nine, in those days, Jesus hiked from Nazareth to Galilee, of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Let me pause there for a second. Uh, Nazareth's way up here in northern Israel, and then the Jordan River's down here. Jesus hiked 80 miles to get baptized, and you thought your trip was something. Next week when you get baptized, think about Jesus hiking 80 miles in sandals to get baptized. And so Jesus does this hike, and then it says in verse 10, and when he came up out of the water, how many love it when, it's like a celebration thing when your friend or your daughter or your husband, somebody gets baptized. And I remember when we were at Zion National Park with Journey Church, and Pastor Adam baptized Tyler in, what were we in, the subway, some freezing cold. You get baptized in my world, it's always cold. It's like breaking ice. So freezing cold. Tyler comes up out of the water. And I love, so I got this freeze frame shot. And then I've also got slow motion of Tyler coming out of the water. He's got this beard. He just has been saved and free from heroin. And he has been, he's been straight and he's gonna follow Jesus. And he's got this beard, this long hair, he comes up out of the water. And in slow motion, man, as he comes up out of the water, it's like this water's dripping off of his beard and his hair. And I'm like, yeah, he got baptized right there. <laughs> Can you see Jesus coming up out of the water? I'm not talking about, you know, Christian bookstore Jesus. <laughs> That's fine, Jesus. Okay, I love that, Jesus. I'm not talking about Christian cheese Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus, like long hair, comes up out of the water, water's just like dripping, he's got some moss on his beard right here, you know, from the Jordan River. I'd love to have a piece of that moss, I'd eat that moss. And so he comes up out of the, out of the water, he's all ripped, you know, six pack, you know, like me. And so he comes, he, come on, courtesy laugh dudes, come on. Comes up out of the water and he says, and then it goes, then it goes immediately, say that, say that. Immediately, he sees heaven being torn open and this Holy Spirit descending like a dove. And a voice out of heaven said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. I mean, right there, if you want to talk about the theology of the Trinity, it's right there. Jesus Christ is present, Holy Spirit descending, Father's voice. How many love? I mean, if the mega hears in our ear could just be a little bit higher where we could hear the voice of Father say, you're my son, you're my daughter, I am really proud of you. How many would love to have that voice in your ear from Father? You're my son, I'm very well pleased. And then immediately, say that again. Immediately the Spirit sends him in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was in the wild with the wild animals and the angels ministered to him. The Celtic Christians have a term for uh, a place where heaven and earth seem to intersect a little bit. How many have ever like had a day where you're like, this is kind of, this is a different kind of day. 
It's like, I feel like God's doing something, but I don't, I'm here on earth. I'm kind of encumbered by all the stuff of my life, but yet God's calling me. The Celtics had a term for it called the thin places. The thin places were where a place where heaven is a little bit closer to earth, where the space between the things of God and the things of this earth are, are closer it's like the veil of the wall between heaven and earth. How many would love to just like break down the drywall from earth and look through and think, dude, that's awesome. Eternity. Thin places. And immediately it says that Jesus, when he came up out of the water, that he saw the heavens being torn. Thin places. Open. And the spirit descended. That word torn, open. It's used two times in the New Testament, one here at the baptism of Jesus and one on the crucifixion of Jesus. The word torn is schizo. The word schizo in the Greek means ripped, torn, kicked out, ripped apart. So heaven is ripped open and Jesus sees a dove. And the second place it's, it's, it's mentioned is on the crucifixion where um, Jesus says, uh, into your hands I commit my spirit. And it says in the scripture that immediately that the, te that the temple curtain, the curtain in the temple was schizoed, torn in two. Hey, I, th I think Jesus is our open heaven. Jesus is our access into. Jesus will rip religion right in two so you can have a relationship with Father God in the Holy of Holies. It is by the blood of Jesus, Hebrews says, that we have access into the Holy of Holies because he schizoed that separation. And you think, I always thought of this little Sunday school, you know, uh, class and the teacher would go, and then Jesus died and the curtain in the temple was rent in two. How many like that rent? It's like rent, it's like King James, rent in two. It's like Jesus, when he died, the temple curtain was schizoed. I like that better than rent. And so some of you might not know this, but the temple curtain was 60 feet high. It was 30 feet wide. Josephus, the historian, says it was four inches thick. In the Talmud, the Jewish Talmud, it says that the way they tested the curtain in the temple was they would put two horses on either side, and if it passed the two horse test, wouldn't rip, then it was good enough for 300 priests to hang the curtain. It was ripped in two. I love the very fact and the visual. The, I just love the, how many love the visuals in the Bible? I, I just can't wait some days where someone comes up with like a scratch and sniff Bible. Like, you know. <laughs> and the donkeys went down to... <laughs> I love you guys, man. <laughs> and so Jesus, you know, Jesus, Jesus did hard things. It, it wasn't like, you know, the spirit of God takes Jesus. Can you see it? Like, welcome to the wilderness. That little national park sign. Welcome to the wilderness. The little, little movie playing there, you know, and make sure you have your snacks <laughs> and drink plenty. Be hydrated. So the Holy Spirit brings him to the wilderness, right? And uh, can you Jesus, hear Jesus like, no, it's too hard. <laughs> Turn to someone and say, oh, it's too hard. It's, I can't do it. He did hard things. He was ripped. Uh, Jesus didn't, didn't die to make you safe. He died to make you wild. Jesus died to give you an, a wild adventure. See, God's will is not an insurance plan. God's will is a wild adventure. Are you tracking with me, church? Come on. I mean, if you want to go ahead and have like a, I know you don't, but you know, Christianity is not boring. I mean, this church, I've watched, the, I've watched Journey Church from day one. It has been a wild ride. I mean, we were just talking, every time we get together, we're like, can you believe we did that? <laughs> I can't believe what we just did. It's crazy. I, I, I think Journey Church 
needs more Bob and Phyllis Whiteleys. You might not, how many have ever heard of Bob and Phyllis? Let me see your hands. You, yeah, a few of you have. That's your pastor's wife's grandparents. And I was reading chapter 10 last night of the printing press ministry begins in Istanbul, Turkey. And we think, well, that's not really a big deal. We got a printing press out of Germany. We brought it down to Istanbul, Turkey. The only problem is if you have a printing press that's proclaiming Jesus Christ, you're going to the penitentiary. So what they did was, while the, pen, the, the, the printing press is going, they would play, um, I think they had a little Ted Nugent going on there. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah, cat scratch fever turned up really loud. Ted Bear going after it, right? And so the reason they did that is because they wanted to hide the sound, or was it like Miley Cyrus, or who's the new one that you went to go see? Sh Shania Twain, what's the next? Who? See, I'm old, I don't even know who that is, so I'm like, <laughs> so they turned her up really loud. You know why? To hide the noise from the printing press so you could print the good news in the middle of fake news and bad news about Jesus. How many know we need more Bob and Phyllis's? Come on. Yeah, I just visited my, yeah, right, right. Get this book. This book right here, A Life of Adventure with God. It's like, not I'm making my angels yawn, God. It's a life of adventure, right, Tracy? Come on, man. It's a life of adventure. Here's my angels, most, most church people's angels. Holy crap, what's going on? <sighs> like, seriously, man? <laughs> you know, you got two angels. The Bible says you got two of them. And I wonder if they're asleep right now. On Monday through, you know, Sunday through Sunday, like, come on, dude, do something. Get with it. Uh, what happened to Bob and Phyllis? Can we be Bob and Phyllis's angels? Because they did something. Just uh, my wife and I went to Visalia, California a couple weeks ago to visit my 93-year-old aunt. Her and Jim were missionaries to South Africa. She's telling me the story that when they got to Brussels, Belgium, they bought a 1954 Chevy, and they took their Chevy and all of their musical equipment. And who, by the way, what is this thing? Is this a cello? Is it a cello? Okay, so they take a bass fiddle, because Dorothy played the bass fiddle. And Jim played, what are these things? The squeeze box thing? What are they? The accordion. So they take that and all their film equipment from Brussels, Belgium in 1954 and drive from Brussels all the way to South Africa through the desert with no roads. And I'm thinking, we need more Dorothy and Jims in this church, in our country today, that will throw down, say, this is it, man. We're going for it. We're clicking the mouse and we're buying the ticket. We're going to write the book. We're going to start the YouTube channel. We're going to go do something for Jesus instead of sitting around here in, you know, Yonville. We're going to do something. I think there actually is a town called Yonville somewhere. <laughs> and I don't want to live there. And so Jesus comes up out of the water. And the temple curtain is torn in two. The heavens are ripped apart. I love it, man, when I can look into heaven because Jesus ripped it open. I do not want to be a part of religion. Amen. I want to be a part of Jesus. So here we go, right? Jesus did some crazy hard things. Jesus was in the wilderness. Actually, the Greek word there is eromos, which means wild place, place of solitude, place of silence, desert, desolate place. My favorite is wilderness. Jesus was in the wilderness. And what happens, <clears throat> uh, I, I did three days in the wilderness a few months ago where I built three campfires every night. I called them fires of forgiveness, where I literally, every time I'd put a log in the fire, I'd ask God to forgive me or forgive something that happened to me or someone that hurt me. Oh, it's too hard. And so I put those fires in there, and I literally, after three days, you know, why in the world do you think that you are called to be like Jesus and not expect to be betrayed by Judas? It's too hard. Well, you know, uh, it's not too hard. The Bible tells me that the way of sinners is hard. 
we have a good life. Come on, we have a good life. Come on, man, we have a good life. We have a Bible, we got the Holy Spirit, we got a good church, we've got, man, we've got, we got authors in our church right here, we have a good preacher. Come on, we've got a good, good we got a great life. Let's give Jesus a hand. It's not a hard life. Man, toughen up, buttercup. That's what someone told me when I started whining about things. You got a good life. Stop whining. It's not hard. You got it, you got it good. Took my kids to Disneyland. No, it was Disney World. Big difference between land and world. You know, land is in California. And then uh <laughs> and then uh world is over there. And uh you know, we're, we're in this, like, cart. <laughs> There's, like, these sea lions and whales, giraffes, looking at us from the cart. <laughs> and I, won't, I won't tell you which one, but one of my kids goes, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm like, you're boring. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Toughen up, man. You got a good life. Right, Emil? Come on, man. <laughs> I want a good amen right there. Stick it, spent you know two grand to get those. I'm bored. Yeah, shut up. You know, <laughs> sit down, sit back, and shut up. And so enjoy the giraffe licking your face with a big tongue. <laughs> and uh, so Jesus, back to him and and <laughs> wilderness. I find this out. That when I'm in wilderness, and I'm talking, I'm not talking about a spiritual, ethereal, philosophical wilderness. I'm talking about real wilderness. And you got wilderness here. I mean, what is it, the Quiver River State Park? Go out there and sit with the poison ivy for a little bit, the mosquitoes. <laughs> I, I, when I'm in the wilderness, I mean, la, I, the last week I was seven days on a river. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Jesse, Pastor Jesse asked me, how did you sleep? And I go, I was so exhausted. I just slept on the sand, you know. I mean, but what I found out in the wilderness is I find out how weak I am. I find out how strong I can be. In the wilderness, I find out more about God. I mean, even Job says, look at the birds and they will teach you about him. John Muir said it this way, there are three baptisms. There's baptism of fire, there's baptism in water, and there's baptism by nature. I'm talking wilderness. I not only find out who I am, but I find out uh, not only who God is, but I find out who I am, and I think that's really important. John Mason told me, Steve, most people are born originals, but they die copies. Most people go through their entire life starting out in junior high, not really knowing who they are, what they're supposed to be. And so they let people tell them what they're supposed to be. They let a commercial or the onslaught of TV or the culture tell them who they're supposed to be. And when Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were torn in two, and you're gonna need a heavens torn in two moment to understand who you are. Where Father says, you are my son, you are my daughter, and I am well pleased with you. You don't have to perform according to this culture. You don't have to be what everybody else wants you to be. You are my beloved son, my beloved daughter, and I am very proud of you. And he says that, when he says that, get ready for your rites of passage. And immediately he went out into the wilderness and was tested by the devil. When I see the test in Matthew and in Luke, Mark doesn't go into detail. I love Mark's version because he's like in the wild with the wild animals and the angels attended him. I will, I will, I, I, that's a tattoo right there. That's a tattoo with the wild and the angels attended. It's kind of long. It'd be expensive too, wouldn't it? And so, and I, I'm not gonna get a tattoo at this stage of my life because you know what happens with tattoos when you get older? It's like sag.com. Like, you know, <laughs> that dove turns out looking like a bullfrog. You're like, well, I'm a bullfrog. <laughs> <laughs> or if I get one right here, you know, I don't know, man. Why you put a basketball on your belly? I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> so, so he's out there and, and uh, he gets tested. I've, I've been, te how many have been tested before? Like it's a test to test what you're made of. Have you? Yeah. You're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Have you ever said that? Have you said, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can take any more of this. 
Uh, I have a friend who's an evangelist, and he said, God, you're on my last nerve, man. You're on my last nerve. How many of you had on your last nerve? And, and unless you've been tested, whew, you're gonna get tested. Unless you've been tested, you're gonna get tested because when you're tested, it tells you who you are and God's doing it for a reason. He's doing it to show you what your DNA is. He, he's doing it to show you what your soul print is. Right. And so, you, you, you know, it's this voice crying in the wilderness, that's John, and, and the, the wilderness is a place where you find your voice. And some have lost their voice. I think in this culture of identity crisis, we've lost our voice. Except thank God for the church. Thank God, this is my son and who I'm well pleased. So Satan goes out there, he goes, turn the stones to bread. I like bread. So at day three, I'm caving. I'm turning that granite stone into bread. And by the way, I'm putting butter on it. Yeah, and so turn the stones to bread. And Jesus says, now it's written, you, gotta live, you can't live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And then his next test is, hey, if you go up this, I'm gonna take you up to this temple, this tower, and if you fall off, you jump off, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world, and, and you're gonna be rich, and you're gonna be famous. And Jesus says, don't tempt the Lord, you're a God. And he goes to temptation number three. He said, look, if you just, look, here's the bottom line. Here, can you see devil? Look, <laughs> hey, if you just do this, <laughs> I, I wish I had like this New Jersey accent, you know, like if you just do this, you just bow down and worship me, man, then I'll give you all that. That was kind of an Ozark, New Jersey. <laughs> and Jesus said, uh, love the Lord your God and him only. And then the next thing immediately, come on, immediately. The devil leaves him. Now, if I was Jesus, which I'm not, but if I was Jesus and the devil did stones to bread, tower, fall down, bow down and worship me, and then Jesus like fights him with the word of God, I'm, I'm telling you folks, it really doesn't take that much to get rid of the devil out of your life. Just resist the devil and he will flee from you. If I were Jesus, I'd be after, after the third one, then immediately the devil leaves. I'd be like, dude, is that all you got? Right, is that all you got? And he leaves, and then Jesus, it says, was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. He was in the wilderness. His identity was tested in the wilderness. And it's not necessarily about when I was 17 trying to find out who I was, but when I found, found out whose I was, made all the difference in the world. It gave me purpose, it gave me direction. And I wonder today in this place, like if you are between the fangs and the feathers, the fangs of this world are pretty sharp. The fangs of this world are, can be scary. It can be fearful. There can be times in your life with the, fine, the fangs of finances are just ripping you to shreds. The fangs of relationships, of your work that you're going in there tomorrow, you're like, dude, I don't know if I, there's a fangs of everyday life. Anybody been there? Come on, wave at me. The fangs of every, everyday life. But the angels attended him. I wonder this morning in this place, if you want to find a thin place, if you want the heavens open to, up to you in the middle of the fangs of life, would you just stand up right now? I want to pray for you. If you just want to, you just want, you're in the fangs and of life. You're in the fangs of life. Father, I need some help. I need some direction. I need to keep this identity of who you really called me to be. I don't want to be anybody else. I don't want to be what they told me to be. I don't want to be what my past tells me to be. I don't want to be anything else, but I want to be who you have called and created me to be. And you're going to be like, well, I love the quote that says, life is either an adventure or it's nothing at all. And God, I want to be an adventurous, wild, possibly even undignified life. David, I don't know if you, this is theologically whacked, but David danced naked before the Lord, man. It's undignified, <laughs> but it was wild. 
and Jesus didn't come to tame you. He came to set you free to what he's created you to be. Could you lift your hands right now and say, God, I want it all, man. Life is an adventurous life or it is nothing at all. I want every breath to be an adventure. I want to hike the trail, the Jesus trail. I want to float the Jesus river. I want heaven torn open for me, not just for me, but when it's torn open for me, it's torn open for my family. Can we give God praise? He's going to send us on a wild adventure. Amen. Amen.